five years ago, I saw this thing called ferrofluid, and I was instantly amazed. Like, there's this liquid that you can move with a magnet, and I knew I wanted to make something with it, but I had no idea what. So I just first ordered a sample, and I started pressing little magnets against the wall just to see what will happen. And it happened so that ferrofluid really easily follows those magnets if they're the same size. And it seemed to me that you can actually draw with ferrofluid. So I was thinking maybe you can make a screen if you can draw. So I started thinking, what can I make? And after a few days, I realized that maybe the best thing to make is a digital clock because there's this notion and flow of time and there's this liquid behavior of numbers. So it seemed really easy. I just, I just mocked it up in Illustrator because I'm a UX designer. I have nothing to do with industrial design. And I took electromagnets and I thought by turning on and off electromagnets, you can simply modify the ferrofluid, how it looks, and you can make numbers. And it seemed really easy. It seemed so easy that I even wanted to try it, actually, and prototype it because I became curious. I wanted to see how it looks. And after a few weeks, first I thought it was going to be a weekend project, but actually it wasn't. It took me a couple of weeks. And I got something that was actually a proof of concept, but it wasn't really enough for me. It wasn't enough for a couple of reasons. First reason, it was wasting so much power. It was, it was insane. It was like a heating unit. And secondly, as I was working on the insides of this project, I started thinking about the outsides. And I made like, many different mock-ups how it could look like. And I started being like, really curious about how it should be nice and how it should be a work of art and not just a proof of concept. So I went back to the drawing board and I started thinking about how can you make this more elegantly. And paradoxically, more elegant way to make it was to make it more complex by making a mechanism. And at that point, I just gave up. I was like, how can I make a mechanism? And that's not my job. I'm not an engineer. I'm not even an industrial designer. So I packed everything in the box and I put it in a closet. And it wasn't really the end of the world because I was approached by a startup from Paris, a really young startup that had one amazing idea. So I joined them and I spent the next three years working with them. And we did some really, really nice things. We traveled a lot. We worked with Google and Google X, so with someone on, on, on Google, Google Glass app. We worked with some famous museums in Bay Area. And it was during those trips that I realized that I don't want anymore to travel to USA, that I actually want to move here and live here. So naturally, moving to a different continent means that you will lose your professional network. And the best thing you should do as a designer is just like create your portfolio, because that's the only weapon you have. And portfolios are really hard for many reasons. And if you ask a designer, like, what's your favorite work in your portfolio, he'll probably tell you that it's the one that he's working on right now. And it's not in his portfolio. On the other side, portfolios are presentations of ourselves. And even worse, they are presentations of the work we did before that we're not so crazy about anymore. So I had this problem, I had this loop, because I wanted to go, and I needed my portfolio, and I didn't want to do my portfolio. So Naturally, I decided to procrastinate. And I remember that there is this project I have at home. So I took the box and I brought it to my office. And I didn't have any plans. I just wanted to play with it just to see what will happen, this part with that, and so on. This is my office like a week after that. And it actually started really naive. I just first, I, I, I finished my job and then I spent an hour or two a day. Then I started spending weekends and then I st started spending like, weeks on this, and then I stopped sleeping. So basically, I had a problem because I had a full-time job, and now I had another full-time job, which was this project that I was going crazy about. So I had to make a decision. And it was actually an easy decision, because at this time, my symptoms were, were this. I went to bed thinking about this project. I woke up thinking about this project, and it was basically the only thing I was talking about to anyone. So it's safe to say that I was in love with this project, and the decision was quite easy. I decided to focus on this project full time, but that had consequences because I didn't have a job anymore. And prototyping this, as you will see on the next slides, is, uh, is time consuming, it requires your full attention, and it requires actually a lot of money. So I needed to solve that because going and doing like freelance for full time once again, I couldn't have time to do this. So I made a deal with my girlfriend. We will not spend any money on anything that's not completely essential for the project, for the rent, and that's all. So it sounds like a really big sacrifice, like no dining out, no going out, no buying stuff, nothing. But actually, it was probably the best year of my life because I got to do so many things. I got to learn so many new things. I got to play. I got to read about chemistry. And I got to play with ferrofluid until I found the right shape, how I wanted it to look. And there are some messy moments there, definitely. Then I 
there are some more messy moments you need to like repeat and repeat and repeat. Then I got to learn a lot about stepper motors. I had no idea what stepper motors are when I started. I just, I, I, I just knew that I needed something to move normal magnets. And I started learning about that. I, I, I started learning about different processes, different, different machining processes, laser, water jets, CNC, late machines, and so on. Then I started building a mechanism, and I started with Lego, obviously, because that's the fastest way to build something and to iterate, because that's what you need if, you, if you're building something that you have no idea what you're building, actually. And then I realized that I need parts, and in order to make parts, you need to design them. And that meant I needed to learn some CAD program. So I sat down and I started learning CAD program, and in a matter of weeks, I actually had a full-blown model with over 800 pieces inside. Every screw was in place. And Months have passed, and the mechanism was actually growing from smaller to bigger and to even larger. And finally, the clock was ready, and this is what it looks like. And in the meantime, I had a problem because I had a deadline. It won the Red Dot Award for the design concept, and I needed to catch that deadline, so the last few weeks were insane. And once I published the project, it's like in the next first, in the first 24 hours, crazy things started happening. It was first on Product Hunt, it was first on Hacker News, it was published by so many, so many different media and channels, just like to mention some co-design and Hype Beast, it was on Discovery Channel. It was shared by some of my personal idols. I was contacted by many people, I started receiving emails like crazy. And among those emails, I received some really interesting job offers also. So then I remembered my portfolio and my plan. And it was funny how my gut feeling actually led me to something that I wanted. And I've also, I've also received so many emails from, from different people like, hey, if you're ever in New York, like, please give me a call when you, come, when you come and we can grab a coffee, if you're ever in San Francisco and this and that. So I actually started building my professional network even, even before I left. And then, then it hit me, actually. I realized that my first design job was a result of my personal project when I was a little kid. I was just messing around in Photoshop. And these guys from Paris I mentioned, they saw my previous design project. And they just called me and they said, like, hey, we like how you think. So can you make apps? And I said, yeah, basically, that's what I do. I make apps. This is like my hobby. And they said, cool. And it's this clock now that brought me to California, to one amazing design studio, when I'm learning from like, the best designers in the industry. And it's, it's all something I couldn't anticipate. So I started thinking, like, what's so powerful about personal projects? And I realized that personal projects lets you express yourself. It lets you show 100% of yourself. And that's your ID card, because it shows how you think. There are no compromises, there are no clients, there are no deadlines. It's only you and the compromises you make with yourself. And it's safe to say that I will have more personal projects in the future, definitely. And I started thinking what was different between the first approach and the second approach when I built this. The first time I failed, second time I didn't. And I came across three points that I want to share with you that will probably help you if you decide to embark on a journey like I did. And these are points that don't relate only to design, they relate to anything. The first one is, if you have projects laying around or ideas in your notebook, stop filtering out the ones that you think you lack skills for. Actually pick them, because if it's a personal project, that's the best way to learn. And by learning new skills, you will actually get more ideas. It happened to me. Learning skills for this project finished some other projects that I couldn't finish before. The second thing is, if it seems easy, and if you decide to do this, uh, it seems easy only because you lack experience. That's actually why, so it's bad news. But the good news is that it, it's, it's, it's not impossible also. And the first time I tried, I thought it's going to be easy, and I went from easy to impossible in like a matter of weeks. And that's only because I had limited experience. So just acknowledge the fact that it's hard, and it takes time. And most important, try to approach your project with a playful mindset. Start playing with it, and that mindset will completely eliminate the fear of failure. It will completely eliminate all the risks and everything. And chances are, if you start playing in it, and if you, if you play with it enough, chances are you'll fall in love. And if you fall in love, nothing can stop you. So that's how you drive your reality. Thank you.